Hi folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man, where we talk about real food and real results. This episode of the show is actually coming from you poolside right now. I'm just outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and it's been a crazy 48 hours. We just packed up pretty much everything that we had into a, uh, well, into two cars, and one of them broke down, so we had to, <laughs> Allison, myself, and Bailey the dog, who's right here next to me, had to pile in, uh, and she was Pretty much, the 75 pound dog was sitting on my lap pretty much the whole, <laughs> whole drive from Texas to Arizona. But now we are officially homeless and we're going to be traveling the world. So I'm taking this show on the road. Uh, and there are going to be a lot of really cool updates. We're going to uh, Fiji, Australia, Bali. Uh, I'll be going through China, then <laughs> Canada, California, a few other places too. Uh, and then I think we're going to wind up in the mountains of Colorado, but I'm going to be doing the show the whole time. I've actually recorded a lot of shows uh, in advance so that you guys keep getting them every week. And I'm going to do my best to batch these intros because I'm not really sure how often I'll have uh, internet over the, the course of the next one to two months because I'm going to be on the beach writing my book, The Wild Diet, finishing it up by the end of the summer, and I just can't wait. So I'll be in touch with you guys. I might be popping in for comments every once in a while on the website and the Fat Burning Tribe, but you might not be hearing from me quite as often just because I'm going to be huddled away uh, cranking out this book for the next few weeks, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, but this week on the show, we have something really special for you. You might not have heard much about it, um, we're going to be talking all about floating, which is uh, essentially sensory deprivation, which, which helps you get rid of stress. So let's start with a quick fact about stress. Contrary to popular belief, stress actually doesn't cause ulcers, but it actually can make them worse. Uh, stress does cause a whole lot of other issues like obesity, acne, depression, diabetes, and heart disease. And we're all surrounded by stressors probably a lot more than we realize, starting with the horrible sound of the alarm clock in the morning for most people. Then we have a constant storm of beeps and buzzes from text emails, push notifications all day long. Then there's traffic, there's always traffic, there's a plane going above me right now. We live in a really fast paced world and because of it, we're seeing a rise in chronic diseases, depression, and anxiety. But if you want to drastically improve your health, find some way to de-stress. On this show, we're going to be talking about one of them. So recording this intro to the show is actually turning out to be pretty awesome because it's a perfect case study for all the things that can go wrong. This is like I've taken a half dozen takes and there have been airplanes going over, computers crashing, people walking in, dogs barking. Um, but hopefully you can you can bear with me a little bit because otherwise I'd have to record this on the plane. <laughs> but uh, so it, it's really not about those dramatic things you can do, those drastic things necessarily to reduce your stress. It's about those little things that you do every single day. One of the things that we do, um, and I'm a huge proponent of these days, is meditation. Um, I also play music, going for a walk outside, getting a little bit of sun, even exercising for 90 seconds to get your blood pumping can make a huge difference for de-stressing. Um, and, and Allison and I have gotten uh, kind of addicted to something that you know we call floating or sensory deprivation. Essentially, you're going into a sensory deprivation tank. They've written horror movies about this, actually really good ones. The way that I like to think about it is kind of like defragmenting your brain while you're in there. Although you can also do a lot of other really cool things, uh, and we're going to be talking about that on this show with Kevin Johnson. He's uh, someone who actually, he's a musician as well, but he uh, has built his own sensory deprivation tanks and, and float tanks, and is, uh, he runs an awesome place that we went to uh, while we lived in Austin um, once or twice every single week called Zero Gravity, where it has a bunch of tanks set up. Uh, if you're going through Austin, I would definitely recommend that you check that out. But they're starting to pop up in a bunch of other uh, kind of more progressive cities around the U.S. Um, and around the world as well. Now, before we get to the show, I just want to ask you a quick favor. I don't have any advertising on this show. Um, of course, I, I talk about my own products sometimes. You can go to fatburningman.com to find out what those are. I have apps and ebooks. I'm writing a new book and uh, uh, video courses and other cool stuff that's coming down the pike. But more than anything else, if you think that someone would benefit from my free show, Fat Burning Man, uh, which I've been doing 
for, let's see, over two years now. And I have subjects about sensory deprivation to very strictly about nutrition and physiology and exercise and all sorts of other things. If there's anyone you think would benefit from this information, please just take a quick second and share Fat Burning Man, this show with them. It's always been my goal to kind of democratize health as much as I possibly could and get the message of truth out there with minimum uh, nonsense and advertising and, and <laughs> basically advertising masquerading as scientific fact, which you find all the time, uh, increasingly so on, on now other podcasts and certainly websites and all over the TV. But if there's anyone you think would benefit from this show, please just send a quick tweet to them quick message, bring it up in conversation, um, share it on Facebook. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please leave a review for Fat Burning Man on iTunes or Stitcher or YouTube or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. All right, let's go hang out with Kevin and learn about that crazy sensory deprivation stuff. All right, folks, we're here with Kevin Johnson. He's the owner of Zero Gravity Institute, where I go floating once a week. How's it going, Kevin? Good, Abel. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. So we've had some awesome conversations at the Float Center, but I'm sure a lot of people out there, they've been hearing the term thrown around, especially on a bunch of podcasts. I know uh, Dave at Bulletproof, who I was just hanging oh. out with, just mentioned it. Um, and a lot of a lot of other guys are starting to talk about it on blogs. And uh, it's something that is kind of coming up in the, in the blogosphere consciousness but it's actually yeah. been around for quite some time so can you just give us a brief overview of what the heck this this floating concept is yeah sure um so fl floating's actually been around for a long time so in um the the basic idea behind this is it's um in what we call a sensory deprivation tank is what they're originally termed so uh, what you're doing is you're entering a chamber that has about uh, 10 to 12 inches of water in the bottom of it in, in uh, our situation, these are uh, kind of larger rooms, uh, approximately six feet wide, eight feet long, seven feet tall. So you, you step into this little room, you close the door behind you, you lay down in the water. In this water, we've uh, put 1,200 pounds of Epsom salt. So you're very buoyant. You float right on the surface of the water. We've heated the water to 93.5 degrees, which is what we refer to as skin receptor neutral. Mm -hmm. So at this temperature, you're, you're not going to register this as either hot or cold. Uh, so we've taken away gravity. We've taken away the temperature. There's no light and there's no sound. So complete sensory deprivation. So we can get into a little deeper about you know why it was invented. Uh, the, the, the doctor who invented it was a, a neuroscientist named John Lilly. And he invented these uh, all the way back in 1954. It was cool. basically just an effort on his part to sort of explore human consciousness. Like what would happen? He, he sort of uh, uh, looked around and realized that what, how we see ourselves, how we perceive ourselves is, is um, in, a, in a real way, it's related to how we respond to the the stimuli that's around us. Yeah. So he started to wonder, like, what what would happen if you shut off all this stimuli? Like, would I would I cease to exist? Would right. I just would the switch just go off? Yeah. You know? And so he set out to create an environment where uh, he could actually experience that, like complete sensory deprivation, and then and by doing so, observe the changes that happen in the brain. And and they found out, you know, quite the opposite. Your brain doesn't shut off. You just you move into different non ordinary states of consciousness. Yeah. And uh, and as you now know, because you've been floating a lot. Right. That's yeah. a pretty interesting state to be in. Oh, uh, it's very interesting, and it's difficult to explain to people who haven't uh, necessarily been there. But what? So what does that have to do with? Um average joe or jane you know like why why would it be important to go into a place where you know i thought that <laughs> or a lot of people say i thought that that was you know punishment the, right. the sensory de <laughs> deprivation that term just comes with this it kind of connotes something that sounds horrible right but it's actually a, a very pleasurable experience especially when you walk out of there which is pretty much yeah. better than any massage i've ever gotten in my life it's like you come out just glowing with this this energy that and, and feeling refreshed that's, I think, kind of tough to describe. So can you, um, can you rant on that a little bit? Yeah. So um, uh, 
We're, we're, so we're trying to change some of the vernacular in the business. You know, it's been called a an isolation tank, a sensory yeah. deprivation tank. All of these things that have these negative connotations. So, you know, now now they're being referred to more as flotation tanks, flotation rooms, things like that. Right. Um, so, the way that it it sort of relates to the average Joe. Th- th- this is a really great question and really kind of the basis for understanding what the benefits of floating are all about. So. Uh, Essentially, we're taking away about 90% of the workload that's on the brain and the body at any given moment. So right now, you and I are operating in what we call a sympathetic response. Hmm. So our, our brain and nervous systems are sympathetic to all the sensory input that's going on around us, all the temperature, the sound, the lights, the traffic, all of this stuff. Uh, it, it's a good thing. It's, it's what uh, helps us to survive, keeps us from stepping out into traffic and things like that, you yeah. know? Uh, knowing whose mouth to put the food in when you go out to dinner. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, we have to function this way. But as, as society gets more and more stressful and we get more and more sensory input through all of our electronics, you know, uh, smartphones, uh, all, just all the things that can stimulate us in life, we spend less and less time in a, what we call a parasympathetic response. So at some point, your body has to rest, has to shut down to recover and, and do the background work. And in uh, this kind of stressful environment that we live in, our systems don't get to switch over into this parasympathetic response very often. And so we become kind of hyper vigilant all the time. Th- this is sort of the root of things like PTSD. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you just can't shut off. You're, you're, you're so wound up all the time. You're so stressed out. You've got so much on your mind, so much to think about. You, you, you've, we've all experienced it. You know, you wake up at 4.35 in the morning and you're wide awake. You can't go back to sleep. You know, uh, it's really important for the body to go into this parasympathetic mode because you, you're, you're, your body and your mind, your brain need time to do the background work. Mm-hmm. And so the, the flotation tanks actually provide an environment that makes it easier for your system to switch into this parasympathetic mode. Once you go there, then your body starts to reallocate resources and you start doing things like extra digestion, mm-hmm. enzyme production, endorphins, and, and most importantly, neurotransmitters. Like you're producing a lot of extra neurotransmitters, uh, both in the brain and in the gut, you know? Yeah. So you're getting dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, things that are really important to, to cognitive function, to proper sleep, um, you, just how your mood is, things like this, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's just an opportunity to, to get into these, like, it, the reason it's a deeper state of relaxation than, than any massage or any other relaxation technique is because, you know, in a massage, you're responding to that stimuli, yeah, you know, that 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 external stimulation, and so while it may be relaxing, doesn't actually give you the opportunity to switch into this parasympathetic mode, right? Which the tanks do. Yeah. That's why you come out feeling so great. You've got this great endorphin load that's been created. Your brain chemistry is back in balance. We've we've noticed that um, over time with floating, it actually also helps for the left and right hemispheres of the brain to synchronize, Mm -hmm. which is uh, also becoming a rarer and rarer state to be in. Right. It's kind of, it's kind of like fasting for your brain. That's one of the things mm -hmm. I love about it. It's like a detox mode uh, where you go in there and um, I I guess we can talk about that. Like what do people do when they're in a a isolation chamber or float chamber for 60 minutes? Because that seems like a lot of time to kind of have no external input whatsoever. But I can tell, I can tell you guys that it's, um, from my perspective, it's really interesting because all conception of time is lost, right? Yeah. There's, you, you, for me, it always feels like a lot less than 60 yeah. minutes if I really thought about it. But if I didn't think about it too much, it seems almost like an eternity. It's kind of like a dream state where there's no, like you don't remember how long dreams were, right? You just kind of have glimpses of them. I think it's right. kind of a similar experience there where you have just these moments of clarity. But, um, but as a rule, like whenever that, my favorite part is when that light slowly comes back on and the music slowly uh-huh. comes back up at the end. It just feels like everything is filling. It. That's probably the closest to heaven I think that you could get on earth is that feeling when, when it comes on. So can you explain like what happens from when you walk into the tank um, and, and out of it just logistically so people can kind of conceptualize that? Then we can talk about what happens inside the tank, I guess. 
uh, okay, so um, if I understand exactly what you're looking for, so you, you want to know just about like what it's physically like to yeah. So like just explain to people because it's hard to it's hard to really know what that means because there's that what's the name of that horror movie? Altered um, states. Altered states with um <laughs> with hurt Whitney right. Hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, that's, (laughs) I remember watching that. I used to be into horror movies, uh, especially Uh like getting them on tape in the eighties and stuff like that. Just loved it. And so that um, is actually kind of a play on what, what happened to the person who invented the tank. Is that right? Well, that, that, that uh, movie is kind of loosely based on the experience of a lot of the guys that were working kind of like the early pioneers of, of psychedelics and brain research and things like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it was, it's kind of a, um, uh, kind of a combination of the story of like Gordon Wasson and, and, and John Lilly and Timothy Lear. It was kind of like a lot, a, a lot of those guys kind of jammed into one character, you right. know? Yeah. Um, and then exaggerated, a, a heck of a lot <laughs> to make it yeah, into a horror a movie. Great movie. It's I, a great I, movie. I, I really, I yeah, dug that still one. Still to this day. I mean, I, I watched it not <laughs> long ago. It was really corny and dated, yeah. but I still loved it. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. So just logistically, I guess I'll just cover that. So basically, when you when you walk into a center like yours, uh, but everyone does it a little bit differently. Uh, sure. It's cool because you it, it is like a spa like experience. Um, yes. But you have people sit down on like the fanciest massage massage chairs I've ever seen in my life, yes. looking at kind of a projection. Um, it's similar to the visualization on uh, the iTunes if you let that go, or like some other screensaver type things where you're kind of yeah. floating through space with a bunch of different cool colors. And um, it's interesting. We were talking about this when I came in there, but that's kind of what you see. Those artifacts are what you see when you can't see anything uh, in the right. tank itself. Um, but so just logistically, you, you kind of go in, you get that little massage, you, um, it allows you to let your guard down, I think kind of prepares you for the more relaxed experience. And then you hop in the tank, I put earplugs in, then I deflate the, uh, the headrest to Uh the floating headrest to about like half it's, (laughs) it's, uh, normal air. And then you just, you know, for 60 minutes, you go someplace else. And then at the end you walk out and it's just bright eyed, bushy tailed every time. Right. Yeah. So like in a really simple and fundamental way, kind of what's happening is that um, your your system is sort of turning up the, the volume knob, turning up the attenuator on your senses. Mm-hmm. You probably noticed that when, you know, a- after you've been in the float tank for a while, and, and I, I should also say that, um, you know, like 60 minutes is kind of the minimum float. Right. Like we, yeah. we do a lot of longer floats too. You know, a, a two or two or three hour float is really, really wonderful. Yeah. And, and uh, we've, we've done some really long, like overnight floats and things like that, experimenting with the tanks. So, um, but uh, it sort of re attenuates your senses. You notice that once you get out of the tank, you go outside and it's like the light is different, right. the smells are more intense, the sounds are more intense. That first meal that you'll eat after a float tastes just incredibly good. Yeah. You know, it's just everything is just kind of like the more knob has been turned turned on it yeah which, which, what's what's interesting about that is someone told me that uh, that that would happen before i went in um and i was expecting a different experience because usually when i hear like heightened awareness or your your sensitivity to um sights and sounds and feelings are increased it would yeah. be more that fight or flight mode but it's actually the opposite of that it's like you're more sensitive but you're totally cool with everything that's going on around you right it's <laughs> right. Because you've been in that parasympathetic mode for a while, and so now your right. now your system is just kind of gently switching back over, sort of coming back to the idea of having to to be in this you know more sympathetic mode and paying attention to what's going on in the world. Right, absolutely. And so it, for me, it's something that has definitely accelerated my progress with meditation, and that's one of the biggest that's, reasons that that I started to do it. Um, even though I, you know, in full honesty, I came in super skeptical. I wasn't sure if I was going to be, you know, put in this little pod straight out of like an aliens movie or something like that. And then, you know, hooked up to uh, like a face mask and submerged (laughs) or something. Like I had no idea what was going to happen, but it's actually, um, it's, it's a lot more accessible than I was expecting it would be. And I think that it's so cool when instead of getting, you know, this, this perfect pill that's going to allow you to sleep at night or this, this other pill that's supposed to make you relax or something else that's supposed to change your mood, you can 
in essence, take everything away and let your body do its own work. And you come right. out um, really just just affected by that experience. And I think it's who could argue that that's you know, bad for you. Um, right. <laughs> although I'm sure some people do. Or what, what are some of the things that people say uh, about this? It, like, do people call it quackery or just super fringe or dismiss it as, you know, what they saw in altered states? What What are people saying about it? Well, so, I, I mean, I think that, you know, at Zero Gravity, we sort of only receive the people that are open-minded enough to <laughs> right, get yeah. themselves there in the first place. You know, like, if you're really super skeptical or think it's quackery, then then you're probably not even going to show up at our door. Right. Oh, um, that's a good point. So, so we, we, we don't... Unless uh, they're picketing or something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I do have that, that sort of conversation a lot when I'm sort of introducing the idea to people that I just meet out in life that right. don't know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know, we we uh, we manufacture the the tanks that you're floating in at our place. Is, that's a design that that we did and that we manufacture. So, in in the um, in the work part of manufacturing those tanks, I do meet a lot of people who have no idea at all what I'm talking about. Right. And it's it's pretty fun to try to explain to people, you know, over and over again, <laughs> like you know what's really going on. Um, I think I think a lot of people are like you. I think a lot of people are curious enough to come in. I think they're very skeptical. Like it, it's deceptively simple. You, you're, it, it's counterintuitive that just laying in a box of warm water in the dark mm -hmm. and silence would would do anything for you, right? right. Which is um, a, a lot of the reason that uh, you know people have pretty profound first experiences mm -hmm. from a float tank because they, they go in without really knowing what to expect. And there's no real way to describe it because it's such an, it's such an individual experience. Yeah. The effects can be different for everybody and uh, sort of depends on what you're looking for, wh why you went in in the first place right. and what, what you're trying to get out of it. So, um, you know, for some people it's, it's just about just simple relaxation for other people, it's about um, uh, recovery from, you know, athletes love mm -hmm. it because it's great for recovery. Um, I, I can kind of go into detail about that later, too. Um, there's the whole cognitive function part of it where you're, you know, working on your brain chemistry. It helps mm -hmm. you be more creative, uh, more intuitive, better problem solver. It's great for super learning, things like that. Right. And then and then there's the group that come in and, and it's about mind expansion. It's about mm -hmm. Uh, non-ordinary states of reality, al altered states of consciousness, this, this exploration kind of meditative work that, that you were referring to earlier. Yeah. So, so people are coming in for all kinds of great reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, again, it seems counterintuitive that something so simple could have such an effect over such a spectrum of ideas. Yeah. But there it is. You know, we've proven it over and over and over again. There's tons of science and research now uh, that's been done in the last, what, 60 years now. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's pretty well documented about the effects that it has. Right. And that's what makes it so interesting to me that, uh, you know, it's, it's really just now having a reemergence. Mm -hmm. it, it, it tried once before in the eighties to become a commercial thing and, right. and, um, for various reasons it did, it didn't happen. Sure. And, uh, now here well, we are back again. Yeah, so I'm curious about this. Why is it coming, do you think, from the private sector as opposed to the public? Um, is it is it well actually let's talk about the history of it a little bit because I thought that was really interesting, the AIDS epidemic and basically how that that crushed a lot of the commercial uh demand all at once. But um, right. you know, just I'm I'm thinking of at a hospital or something like that, or at a retreat center or yeah, certainly at a school, I could imagine, you know, you send a couple of kids in there, um, yeah. you know, one, once a day, maybe in the morning before their classes or instead of recess or something like that, especially kids who have, you know, mental issues that they need to work through or super, you know, I was always running, at, you know, 200%. And so I know that I could use something to kind of slow me down. How come we're not seeing it, you know, kind of used therapeutically like that? Well, you know, f for a long time, it really was from, from okay. the mid 50s when it was invented until the late 70s. Float tanks were really relegated to like psychology departments and university okay. basements and stuff like that. They were doing a lot of um, a drug research with them, mm -hmm. um, different uh, teaching methodologies, things like that were, were being experimented with. It really didn't become a... Um, commercial venture until the late 70s. Okay. Um, 
the one of the first float tank manufacturers, a company called Samadhi. They they opened a float center in Los Angeles in partnership with a couple of guys, and um, th that's actually how I found out about floating. I I, I went to work for that company in the mid '80s, hmm. and um, I didn't know anything about it. I just discovered them through an article in the newspaper. And uh, I, I'd seen the movie Altered States, and and I really thought that was just a a, a vehicle, a mechanism for the movie. I had right. no idea that they were a real thing. Oh yeah, I I totally agree. I thought that that was just a, like a gimmick that sold the yeah. movie, not a real thing at all. So I was surprised yeah. to hear that it actually was something. Yeah, I remember seeing the movie for the first time, going, "Well, that thing looks pretty cool. I'd like to try <laughs> right. that." How can I get it on that? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, then I, I found this place in Los Angeles in the mid 80s that was, it had six tanks and they were, you know, making it commercially available for people. And so yeah. I went in and did it. And my, my first float was profound. Like I could not believe what happened to me in, in that float. It was, it was that state of consciousness, that non ordinary state of consciousness was mm -hmm. something that I um, would not have believed that I could tap into without taking something or doing a lot of meditation or something like that. So uh, immediately I, I made an appointment to come back a couple of days later. I, I needed to find out if this was a one-off experience or <laughs> if this was really brought on by this tank. And, uh, and I was lucky enough at that second visit to meet the owners and uh, mm -hmm. they offered me a job. They, they, I told them I was so new cool. to town and offered me a job. And that, that's really how I got involved with it in the first place and got to do a lot of floating there and, and, you know, learned a lot about it, mostly from just talking with people when they would finish their floats. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would, I just, I still to this day, I'm, I'm just fascinated with people's experience in there Yeah, because it's so different. I mean, I can talk to 50 people and get 50 different stories about yeah. how it was in that tank, you know? Yeah. And I think the coolest reason for that, or, or one of the things that happens is that you get in there and you realize, oh, I'm driving, you know? Yeah. And for the first time, in maybe years or maybe the first time ever you get that experience and you're like, wow, I can just hang out and explore ideas or, you know, I, a lot of times I'll try to uh, use my brain to alter my perception and try to look oh. out of my right eye, even though it's completely dark or only then switch to my left and kind of do right. little exercises like that. You talked about uh, the benefits for athletes, which I'd love to cover too, because when I go in there, um, it's so easy when you're overstimulated to ignore a nagging pain and not even realize that it's there, that something's locked yeah. up or that you slightly tore something or it's something slightly injured. You go in that tank and after a few minutes when you let your guard down, you really just kind of get into your head and you start doing some body sensing. Um, yeah. I had Danny Dreyer on the podcast not too long ago and he's become a friend of mine, which is so cool. He does chi running and those are the folks who really taught me how to uh, – do advanced kind of body sensing techniques to yeah. release joints and focus on areas that might need extra blood or attention. And so I spend a lot of time and a lot of do a lot of work in there, just kind of sensing the body, see if anything's going on. It's amazing. Like I'll, I'll feel like one of my toes is slightly off where like yeah. it's, it's not little things like your earlobes itchy. It's like a nagging deep pain right. that you need to work on or something like that. So can, why don't you talk a little bit about the, um, the experience f and benefits for athletes or, uh, okay. or people who need body work? Right. So, um, it's such a unique environment because we're taking away gravity and that this is the only place on this planet where you, where you're going to get to experience that. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of people are familiar with like, you know, floating in the Dead Sea or the Great Salt Lake or something like that. So these these float tanks have five times the salinity of the Dead Sea. Yeah. Just, just to give people an idea of how easy it is to float. So so imagine now when you're in that environment, this is more comfortable than any bed you've ever slept in or your favorite lazy boy recliner or anything like that because you don't have gravity. Mm -hmm. The 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 solution that you're floating in is supporting you evenly, 100% evenly across your body. Yeah. No pressure points, nothing like that. That's why you can stay in the tanks for hours and hours and hours and be totally comfortable. You don't, you don't feel like you have to roll over or do anything like that. Right. So um, in terms of benefits for the physical body, you're soaking in Epsom salt, which is a muscle relaxer. Right. You know, and for generations now, you know, you got tired feet, you put them in an Epsom salt right. bath, right? So, um, 
you're in a natural muscle relaxer. It's allowing your muscular system to let go, which allows your skeletal system to naturally readjust, right? Because you don't have muscles pulling on your mm-hmm. on your skeletal system. Um, another great benefit when you take gravity away, you get what's called a vasodilatory effect. So, just um, imagine that all of your arteries and veins, blood vessels, everything are expanding because you took gravity off them. Gravity's pushing down. You take the gravity away, everything expands. Right. So if you think this through, you get an instant drop in blood pressure, better circulation, lower heart rate because your heart's not having to push against gravity. Mm-hmm. Right. Just like everything is suddenly working. And as you probably know very well, like part of healing and recovery is is circulation. Like you right. have to have fresh blood cells moving through the tissues, moving through the muscles. Your your um, circulatory system is what's um, moving oxygen all around your body to feed your muscles and mm-hmm. things like that. So you get in this environment, the the work becomes very very easy for your body to do. Yeah. So this is like you're naturally relaxing. You know you heal better when you're relaxing. When when you're in a fight or flight mode, your blood and your body energy is at your extremities. It's in your arms and your legs, not in your core and in mm-hmm. your body where where it can do, uh, you know, the, have the most benefit and and do the healing work. Yeah. And so that's why it's great for athletes to get in there. The recovery time is so much faster after a workout. Mm-hmm. If you do your workout and then do the float tank for a while. Yeah. And that's actually what I do. So, um, I do my monster lifts on Mondays <laughs> and then I come yeah. in for a Monday float that afternoon. Yeah. Uh, and I also do a bunch of meetings that, uh, usually I'd rather not do. It's the ones that you kind of have to do type stuff. And so I get all fired up and all, all frustrated. And then I come in right. and, uh, you know, a couple hours later after I'm back home, after the whole experience, I'm just happy as a clam, ready to hang out. And I feel totally refreshed. And it's just, it's a really great, rhythm for me and one of the coolest things too that that i think it represents like the reason that it's kind of uh moving up right now and and getting a lot of attention is because we're all just so overstimulated we have this this technology everything has notifications one of the things that that bugs me more than anything almost in in technology is notifications that are on by default and i think you know as we're becoming increasingly connected with more and more devices you know we have phones tablets computers um other computers cars that are now beeping at us uh you know refrigerators dryers smoke alarms radon alarms and there's always something kind of beeping at us um we've we've gone (laughs) farther and farther down that road and i think what we're going to see in the next few years is a return to simplicity and you know, from being a kind of in the extremities back to the core, hopefully right. of who we are, and that's one of the big themes of this this show. And what, what I stand for is going back to nature and simplicity, and working on yourself, getting that figured out before you kind of go out and have be, have one thousand friends on Facebook or something like that, and you're yeah. trying to manage all those relationships. We're um, we're going to need to come back, and I think floating really represents a return to what it means to be human like an experience that we probably used to have right at night um right. to some degree to to a much lesser degree it's it's less of an extreme um but at least we would have been able to get into that parasympathetic mode like you talked about before which we just don't really have access to anymore yeah i mean this technology this is a double edged sword for sure like you know we we all love it right mm-hmm. there's no sense in denying it we love our smartphones oh yeah computers we love our gps and our email and our texts and all of that right oh, totally and you know so the, the downside of it is that you know i know you've got your phone with you everybody oh, yeah, that's right there with you all the time <laughs> and so you can't escape me right like we all right. know that we know we've got our phones right. you know and so um you know this it's cool but it's a double-edged sword at least le- at least in the tank you know if, if you're ignoring a phone call in because you're in the tank, you're naked. You can't have your phone in. There. That's one <laughs> right. of the rules, right? Yeah. And uh, and so at least your friends have to give you that one hour out of your day. Yeah. Um, you know, my uh, I, I see an acupuncturist on a regular basis, and he tells me that about eighty five percent of the cases that he sees on any given day are because of some form of overstimulation, whether hmm. it's stress, food, drugs, and alcohol. Whatever it is, a lot of it can be traced back to overstimulation. Sure, and and uh, it's just something. 
you know, you're talking about getting back to, to uh, what it means to be human. If you think about humans in terms of evolution, this, this technological explosion that we've had, this is, this is an evolutionary blink of an eye, faster right. than a blink of an eye, right? Yeah. How, ma- how many, you know, tens of thousands of years did human beings live in this other kind of world? You know, that, yeah. that's really how we evolved. We, we used to spend hours out of every day sitting on the edge of a grassland waiting for dinner to walk by. <laughs> right. Pl- plenty of time to contemplate who we are, what we're doing here, what our day is like, everything moved at a much slower pace. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly we're asking this like, you know, very complex biocomputer that we have as a brain to suddenly deal with all this new stuff that's happening. It's remarkable that we can do it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, you know, I always looked at floating kind of like defragmenting a computer hard drive. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and how fast your computer would run after you would do that right. little bit of maintenance. Man, this, I don't miss that at all. That. <laughs> What's that? I don't miss that at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss that at all either. But, but that's uh, exactly what it is. Yeah, it, it kind of gets you back and into that mode. And that's how you feel. You come out of the tank and you feel like, wow, everything's working great. Like mm-hmm. everything's lubricated. I've got all these great ideas. My creative process is up. My ability to, to navigate life has changed. It's, it's, right. It, 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 it can be really life altering when, when you start floating on a regular basis. Yeah. And I got to say it's the, um, I've, I've had access to that brain mode a few other times. We talked about this when I came in and and Mm -hmm. we had that awesome hour long chat in the waiting room. But, um, (laughs) I think I made y'all late for your floats. Oh, but it was totally worth it. It And then we had great floats, but, (laughs) (laughs) but the, um, I was only able to get there through music growing up. Um, Mm -hmm. later as I learned, meditation i was kind of able to get there but only pieces of it only just like a little glimpse music yeah. i could kind of get there once you reach a certain level of of mastery or you can get to flow um, right. predictably right. To, to a degree but this accelerated that s- such that you know if, even if i'm on a plane now um i can kind of get i can tell that my brain is in that same mode uh, yes. And I'd never been able to do that without that external kind of like stimulus of music. And you're a musician as well, which I think is so cool because yeah. um, we can kind of like just get that and, and right. jam on it <laughs> a little right. bit. But it's very, very similar. And one of the coolest things kind of as a as a creator, which is what I want to be and, you know, a source of production as opposed to consumption yeah. um, is it, it gets you straight into that mode because there's no stimulation um, for a period of time which seems like eons while you're in there and then you come out of there and if if i'm playing music or if i'm thinking of an idea or if i just have like a pen and paper magic comes out in a way that it it just doesn't really otherwise so i think for people who haven't ever really experienced that or maybe you kind of know what i'm talking about um going for a float is uh it it can be like you said a life-changing experience because you might get there the first time but it's kind of additive it might take six ten twelve maybe longer floats for you to really access that but once you're there it's something that you can actually um, start working into the rest of your life which i think is is so cool so how have you seen people um be affected over time by the the practice of floating yeah well well we're seeing um so let me uh, refer everybody to a, a book that was written by John Lilly, uh, the guy who invented the float tanks. Um, it's called Programming and Metaprogramming in the Human Biocomputer. And this is kind of what you were just talking about, how you can now put yourself in that meditative state, this, this, that, that sort of consciousness that you're in when you're in the tank. Mm-hmm. You're now starting to be able to do that just anywhere you are in life. Like you say, sitting on an airplane, you can just sort of get there. This is the reprogramming of the brain that's going on. Like you you are teaching your brain how to be that relaxed. Mm -hmm. Just like anything else, it's a practice, just like meditation or yoga or working out at the gym. You're going to get a great uh, effect out of you know, one visit, but that's not the same thing. Like you're not going to go to the gym and, and be in perfect shape after one workout. Right. It's going to take yeah, some time. Exactly. Same thing with meditation and things like that. Now, I cannot meditate to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is one of the things that attracts me to the tanks is yeah. that it's like the easy button for those of us, for most of us who can't calm ourselves down and settle our minds enough to meditate. This is a great way to go about it and get yeah. all the all of those benefits. Um, so, you know, we see people that are 
uh, again, kind of depending on what they're coming in for, you know, whether it's a, a you know chronic pain, we're seeing a lot of success with that. Fibromyalgia sufferers, mm-hmm. um, we've been actually seeing a lot of PTSD sufferers, mm-hmm. a lot of vets, people that are coming back from the war. Um, a great story: one of our guys uh, had been heavily medicated for six years, and they, they just weren't making any progress. He found floating on his own. He came in, gave it a shot. On his like fourth float, his doctors took him off all of his medication. And wow. his doctor called me and she was like, you need to tell me everything that you can tell me about floating. I need to right. know why this guy's <laughs> having you know, a turnaround like this. Yeah. And now she brings five or six, seven guys at a time in a van from Fort Hood. Once a month, they come down. They all get, go through the system, float and do their thing. A group from San Antonio at the, from the Wounded Warriors, mm-hmm. they're coming up and using it. Cool. So – you know, just uh, for those guys, just being able to um, not always be so hyper vigilant, to be mm-hmm. able to let their systems switch over. A lot of those guys can't get into parasympathetic mode. Right. We we see police officers, firefighters, things like that, who are just they're just cranked on all the time. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this this can wear you out. It'll it'll get in the way of your sleep. Your your whole body chemistry goes off when you're like this for a long time. So. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot of benefits from that. We see uh, students that are that are using it to you know help their studies and their learning process. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, parents bringing in young kids that are you know having problems in school that need to focus that are you know kind of um, uh, you know a, uh, what is it ADD I guess kind mm-hmm. of uh, you know hard hard for the kids to focus. This is providing them a way to kind of get less going on in their brain at any right. one time. Uh, musicians, artists love it because of just the the creativity that it that it spawns. You you probably notice like you're done with a float. You usually want to go pick up a guitar, yeah, grab that's a, right. p- a notepad and a pen and write something. Uh, you know, depending on whatever, you know, however you express yourself creatively, mm-hmm. sometimes floating is is incredible for that. Yeah. So uh, uh, I I've only done it I think at four o'clock in the afternoon, but some people um, do it earlier in the day, right? To kind of get straight into that mode. What's what's your favorite preferred time to float or how does it affect you differently depending on how you do it? Yes. So I think the effects of floating kind of change throughout mm. the day. I've noticed that if I float early in the day, then I have a kind of focused energy and concentration that I can tap into for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Whereas if if I come in at night, uh, you know, I just sort of already know that like my day's winding down. Then it tends to be a a, a, a deeper kind of relaxation that um, that uh, will help me sleep, just kind of help me wind mm-hmm. down after the day. Okay. So. I, I think like so many practices, the the intention that you have when you go in mm-hmm. is going to dictate a lot of your experience. Right. Uh, I, I can go in there with very specific problems on my mind or or certain tasks that I want to accomplish. Like if I'm writing or something, yeah. Uh, you know, I can work out you know long sections of something that I'm that I'm writing while I'm in there. Mm-hmm. I can uh, work work through, you know relationship issues, business issues, like you, you can get a lot of, you know, actual work done in there Mm -hmm. if that's your intention. A lot of other times I go in and it's just about exploring states of consciousness, like just allowing my, my states of consciousness to change organically and just become a witness of what those states of consciousness are actually like. So and, we, we've got a couple minutes left. Why don't we t- touch on that a little bit? Because um, we had a great conversation about your 100 floats in 100 days and how you're actually writing a book at the same time about floating. And the book has changed the more that you've you've been floating. So can you walk us yeah. through how, how that's happened and, and kind of how your mind has changed the more that you floated? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's pretty uh, wild. It's, it's become a pretty deep thing. Um, so... Uh, a lot of what I'm, a lot of what I'm thinking about and working on right now is is sort of an amalgamation of a lot of different people's ideas, but you know, in a very basic way, what has happened? Okay, so I, I should preface this with the fact that I've I've floated a lot, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I've I've had over 500 floats. Wow. Um, 
uh, like you just said, I just did a hundred floats in a hundred consecutive days. Um, I've spent, you know, up to nine hours at a time in the float tank. So, you know, I, I've, I've really (laughs) become an explorer of these, uh, states of consciousness that can be achieved in there. Right. And, um, this is kind of a big subject. I'll just kind of briefly outline kind of uh, something important that I think is going on in there. If you can imagine the, imagine that life doesn't exist, that like nothing that we know, like the planet doesn't exist, galaxies don't exist, everything in the universe is just empty nothingness, all no life forms, nothing, right? There's a moment in the tank where you can actually touch this, what I call like the unified field of consciousness. Like this is source before anything, Mm -hmm. this uh, non-experiential sort of existence that you would have if you were just pure consciousness out in the universe. Mm -hmm. So I I know this sounds like, you know, really (laughs) heavy duty hippie stuff right now, but, um, but really with practice, you know, you you can actually get into these different, these kinds of states of consciousness yeah. the that people are looking for when they get into years and years of a meditation practice. Right. right? right. Um, I'm starting to understand now that, that consciousness on an experiential, there's nothing to taste. There's nothing to smell. There's nothing to feel. There is no temperature, gravity. There is no, uh, relationships being in the arms of your lover, eating a good meal, having a, a, a great glass of wine, like, and, and I, I'm starting to understand that we as this unified consciousness are creating everything that's around us in order for us to have experiences. Hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying totally. to do it. It's, sure it's a thinker. It's a three hour conversation. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? It doesn't really fit into a soundbite, but I can say like the intermediary there is uh, there's a great Greg Brown song. Uh, about this but a lot of you know artists and and musicians and other people who are kind of creators um have experienced this as soon as you reach that certain level of mastery you realize it's not you who's writing the song or playing the solo or doing the 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 creative heavy lifting anymore it's really coming from somewhere else your brain is in an entirely different place and that's what you get to and kind of like realize as an experience when you get in the float tank that's or at least i got there right away and i was just like wow this is i remember this this is so cool and and um i was with a friend actually who started floating and he got to that place for the first time too and he he described it in a very similar way it sounds squishy if you've never experienced it but he he um i mean it's for real it's really interesting it goes back to what you were saying about how you can get in there and lose track of time that Mm -hmm. it's an hour just goes by like a flash right and there's i'm sure you've already experienced this where you sort of come to, you sort of wake up, come back to consciousness, right? But you haven't been asleep. You, you mm-hmm. know that you haven't yeah, been exactly. asleep. Yeah, exactly. But you're like, where, well, where have I been? Like, what was that? <laughs> I didn't notice time going by. I wasn't thinking about anything. Right. Like, like, just run that around in your mind for a minute. I wasn't thinking about anything. How, how many minutes can you count up in your life that you were just completely clear, like Mm -hmm. nothing going on in your mind. And yet there in the tank, you can sustain that for quite a long period of time. Right. Right. You, you may have experienced 20, 30, 40 minutes of that. Mm -hmm. What, what, what's going on? Right. What's behind that? Yeah. And that's what I mean. When the lights come on, I can tell that my light, my eyes are open because I can see everything very clearly, but like I was not asleep, but I certainly wasn't awake. It's, yeah. it's like a really, really interesting thing. So we're just about out of time, Kevin, but why don't you um, tell folks um, a little bit about how my, they might be able to get started floating either in their areas or I think there are some like relatively expensive at this point consumer models that are out there too. Um, and also tell people where they can find you and, and your work. Right. So um, if, if uh, depending on where you are, if you're in Austin, of course, you can come to Zero Gravity Institute. Uh, highly recommend find, it. Totally awesome. Find us online at, at uh, zerogravityinstitute.com. Uh, there's a section on that website where uh, you know we, we design and sell our own uh, very large float tanks. If you're worried about the Cadillac of float tanks, yeah, they're 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 really nice, and um, so you you can you can check out our 
our, uh, at our tanks on that website. If you don't live in, in Austin, there's a website called Flotation Locations. It's pretty comprehensive. You <laughs> can put in awesome. your city or your, your zip code, and they'll uh, give you, you know, the closest float center to, to wherever it is that you're living. Cool. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on. This is something that I think people will probably be listening to and watching for a long time because <laughs> I, I have a feeling that floating is going to take off, and uh, and I'm really happy about that. And I just I, I think what you've started there at Zero Gravity is such a cool thing. It's kind of become a, a collection of a lot of really culturally interesting people all in the same yes. place at the same time going I have through a pretty great cool... conversations in that yeah place. oh absolutely so I if you guys swing through austin that. definitely stop by zero gravity and uh and best of luck kevin let me know how i can help you and i'd be happy to have you on uh again soon to see how that book comes out okay yeah it seems like we might need like a three or four part uh conversation <laughs> about floating it went by so fast it was really fun absolutely all right thanks kevin thanks a lot abel